Hey, maybe we should call this the New Yankee Boatyard. Looks pretty salty, doesn't it? Now, for the last week, I've been putting the finishing touches on this sailing dinghy known as a Clancy. I installed the deck, the deck trim, and then covered everything with three coats of epoxy. I varnished the wood that I wanted to show and painted the underside. I've even installed some of the running hardware. I formed a tiller and a rudder assembly. And it's just about ready to take it for a sail. I can't wait. Now, if you'd like to build a Clancy, a measure drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before this program ends. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to complete this hull, which I built last time, right here in the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Since the last time you saw this hull, I completed all the fairing, which is to say I sanded smooth and tapered all the fiberglass joints, both inside the hull and outside. Then I applied three coats of epoxy to everything, and this waterproofs the wood. And it's important to do it now because once the deck panels go on, it would be difficult to reach into the bulkhead compartments and apply the epoxy. I just completed removing any lumps off of the horizontal surfaces that the deck is going to sit on so that they'll fit nice and tight. The next thing I want to do is install this piece of wood, which is a solid piece of mahogany that I milled on my table saw. Now, it's known as a guard or a gunnel, and it sits at the top edge of each side. I've also roughed up the epoxy right at the edge because I'm going to attach the gunnel with glue and screws. I've left these guard pieces long. I'll trim them later. I'm using three-quarter inch bronze screws to attach the guard every four inches. And instead of measuring, I just made a little guide stick. I've extended a center line up over the top of the guard. Now using a dovetail saw, I'll trim it off. I've attached the other guard rail with some glue and screws, except for the last couple of feet, because I have to fit this piece against the one I already cut. I've made a mark, and that should leave it a little bit long. Okay, now that's still long. I'm going to clamp it and make another cut. Okay, now that's pretty good, but it's open at the top a little bit. So now if I run the saw right down the joint, it should be perfect. Took care of it. The next piece to install is this solid piece of mahogany that I beveled on each side at the table saw, and that conforms to the angles of the sides of the boat. And this is known as the cut water. I'll install it using some marine adhesive and screws. for the deck panels. Quarter inch marine plywood cut according to the plan and covered with three coats of epoxy. That's why they're so shiny. Now they're meant to be oversized and the first thing I want to do is make a dry fit and I'm going to have to make a little cutout for this mass tube. Now I've sanded the epoxy because it's almost impossible to get a pencil mark to show up. Now, if this cutout does not fit perfectly, we don't have to worry because it's going to be covered by a deck trim piece. Okay, now what I want to do is set it in place and make sure that it overhangs all sides by just a little bit and then attach it with some screws. Now, these screws are just temporary and later they'll be covered with deck trim. Now, back here, the deck 
panel has to be trimmed along the center line of the boat. And the same thing up front. Now this line will define the outer edge of the guard. Now a word about power tool safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now this line, which shows the exact edge of the guardrail, I want to stay about an eighth of an inch to the outside when I make the cut for final trimming later. Now that completes the trimming of the panel for the other side. Now this is a polyurethane marine adhesive sealant. And that'll help to secure the deck panels and also seal off the bulkhead areas. Well, now I'm ready to permanently set the panel. And the first screws that I'll put in will be the ones that I used earlier. And that will assure that the panel is in exactly the right position. Well, now, once again, I'm using my guide stick to space the screws. Except this time it's six inches on center. Now the screws are more three quarter by six bronze. Now to trim off any excess plywood, I'm simply using my laminate trimmer. It's just like trimming high pressure laminate countertops. Now, I didn't make a mistake. That hole is so I can stick the laminate trimmer down where the dagger board cutout needs to be. Now, with my jigsaw, I'm going to round off the point of the bow and then sand it smooth. Now, this piece of plywood is the deck trim, and the hole is for the mast tube. Now, the deck trim is attached with epoxy which is a two-part system. This is the resin, and to that I add the right amount of hardener and mix it up. And then I thicken it with a little bit of filler. Now we'll just set it in place and fasten it with some screws, and they'll hold it while the epoxy sets up. known as a plug cutter and set up in my drill press I'm able to cut some 3 8 inch diameter plugs from solid mahogany that I'll use to fill the counter bores on those deck screws. Now before I go home tonight I really want to get all these plugs installed so I've just set a little bit of epoxy in each counter bore and I'll just press the plug in place. Tomorrow I'll be able to sand them off. Well, overnight, the epoxy has done its job. It's set up, and the plugs are firmly set in place. Now I'm using my block plane to remove as much material as I can. Then I'll sand them flush, round over all the edges of the deck, and apply another coat of epoxy. Well, after I completed the sanding on the deck, I vacuumed it off, and took a tack rag, and cleaned off any remaining dust. Now, I've moved the boat outside because I want to continue working in the workshop, and while this epoxy coating dries, I don't want any dust to get on it. As long as no leaves or bugs fall on it, we'll be all set. 
Now, all the epoxy coats that I put on the boat were done the same way. I used this foam roller, which gives me a nice, thin coat. The epoxy is a little different than the one we used for bonding. It has a different hardener, which extends the life of the epoxy to about 35 minutes. Now, with the epoxy all rolled on, before it starts to get too tacky, I'm going to take a four-inch throwaway foam brush. And I'm not going to try to move the material. I'm just going to smooth it out. Just lightly put some pressure on the brush and just keep going one section at a time with a slight overlap. While the epoxy dries, let's start working on the rudder tiller assembly. The rudder is made up of three pieces of plywood, like a sandwich. There are two outer pieces with a spacer, which allows for this aluminum plate to move. Over here, I have two pieces of quarter-inch plywood that I've epoxied both sides. I've sanded what will become the inner part so that I'll be able to glue the sandwich together with more epoxy later. I'm going to cut the pieces as one, and to hold them in place, I'm just going to tack them together with a little bit of hot glue. Here's the spacer that I also cut at the bandsaw. I'm just going to tack it on for the ride through the drum sander. That way, all the edges will be uniform. Well, now it's time to assemble it. The pieces have been cleaned with acetone. Let's bond them together. Okay, now to hold them, we'll screw them together. Now, that may look like a lot of screws, but I don't want to lose my steering in the middle of an important race. Now, the screws that I'm using are a half-inch by six stainless steel screw, and I'm going to install them from both sides of the rudder. And once again, some of these three-eighths-inch plugs. The lower part of the rudder is made from a piece of 1 8 inch thick marine aluminum. Now let's make the tiller. It needs to have a notch in one end to fit over the rudder. And the very end of that notch is cut at an angle so that when you swing the tiller, it won't bind up. I found that the best way to cut that notch was to use my table saw with the blade set at the maximum height to give me the angle cut. And I've set the fence to start along this line. Then I'll keep moving the fence until I get over to the line on the other side. Now, if you look at the tiller, it's tapered fine along the top edge or the bottom edge, but along the side, it's still a little thick down where the handle is. So I want to taper that. One way to do that is to use the joiner. Now, how a joiner works is that the outfeed table is at the same height as the very highest point of the cutter knife spinning. To joint wood, you lower the infeed table. This table is down a sixteenth of an inch. As you bring the wood in, it'll remove a sixteenth of an inch. Then the outfeed table will support the piece as it goes through. If I want to make a taper, if I place the wood on the outfeed table first, the cutter knife cannot even hit it. But as I push it down, it'll gradually taper the piece until about a sixteenth of an inch is removed at this end. If I keep doing that, I get a perfect taper. With a 
round over a bit, I could dress up all the edges. As you can see on the top side, I switched to a bead bit, which gives me a little ledge right along the edge. Well, now that the epoxy has set up on the rudder, the plugs can be sanded flush. That hole is for the bolt that'll hold the metal part of the rudder. And this one is going to be for the bolt that holds the tiller. Okay, that takes care of the hole in the rudder plate. Okay, now that's a quarter inch hole through the tiller to attach it to the rudder. Of course, before I do the final assembly, I'll want to put some additional coats of epoxy on the wooden parts. Now let's build the dagger board. The dagger board is a board, or in this case, a piece of plywood that's narrow and very long. It slips down through the dagger board slot, and it has a handle at the top so it can't fall through. And what the dagger board does is keeps the boat from slipping sideways when it's under sail. Now, using my belt sander, I want to make a profile on the lower portion of the dagger board, sort of like an airplane wing, so it'll go through the water easily. Now, using my table saw, I've made a groove in the handle piece so that it'll slip over the plywood. Okay, a little more epoxy to secure the handle. I'll fasten it with some screws and plug the holes. Now once this sets up, we'll seal the entire dagger board with at least three coats of epoxy. Now, after the epoxy dried on the deck, we brought the boat in from outside and set it up here in the paint room. This epoxy needs to be covered with either paint or varnish to protect it from UV. So I'm preparing the surface by sanding it with some 220 wet dry sandpaper. Now, this is an important step to remove any of the sanding residue Otherwise, the paint just isn't going to stick. Well, what do you think of this for a color? Around here, we call it New Yankee Red. It's a marine enamel, and I'll put a couple coats on the bottom. And after they dry, I'll varnish the sides and the deck. We'll put the hardware on, and then we'll take it out for a sale. The sail, the mast and boom, and all the marine hardware we purchased as a kit from a marine supply house in the state of Washington. That source is listed in the measured drawing. There's not a lot of hardware. On the rear deck, there are two fair leads and a clam cleat. For the transom, there are gungeons and pentels to attach the rudder. Inside the cockpit, there are three deck plates, which will seal off the bulkheads. And on the forward deck, there's a fair lead and another clam cleat. The kit also includes some half-round brass that I run down each guardrail and the center of the keel. Well, I couldn't launch the new Yankee fleet without the help of my good friend Steve Thomas, a salty dog if there ever was one. Hey, Steve, you want to check out my rigging? Sure. Well, you got your dagger board in, and uh, traveler here with a stop nut on it. That's good. You've got your 